so happy that Zoom is playing with us today. There's nothing worse than when it does it. Oh, is that you? I was going to say, oh my God, is that me? Sorry. That's okay. I don't know how to stop that happening because my phone's on silent, so it just comes through my computer. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know how to stop that either. Yeah. There's got to be where. Let me just double check that we're live. Thanks for jumping on here today. It's okay. No, that's not where I want to be. Let me just check my home page. On my screen, it says live on Facebook. Yes, it does on mine too. I just want to double check because once before I thought it was that and then it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I'm perpetually scarred. Yes, it's here. Okay. <laughs> So welcome, beautiful Katie Parker, you magnificent woman doing incredible work in the world. I would love if you could share with us who you are, what you do, how you entered Embark and how you have exited Embark. Mm, wow. How long is it? Uh, <laughs> okay, well. Start with who you are. I'm Katie. <laughs> um, so the way I entered Embark was... Um, Hang on a minute. What do you do? <laughs> what is your work in the world? Oh, okay. All right. Okay. So my background is a social worker. So I've been a social worker now for 15 years. Um, and I, um, you know, I'll get to that later in the chat. Um, I, I, I say. Oh, no, I think just the way I learned how to work with people, you know, in a one-on-one -on -one counselling session is so different to how I probably do that now. Um, I just think that my, 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 my social work education, you know, back, yeah, well, I don't know, 17, 18 years ago, yeah, just, I mean, you know, it, it was a good grounding for me, but yeah. just what I've learned probably in the last couple of years since really just, I mean, it's not just Embark, it's really going back to discovering nourishing the mother and having yourself and Bridget and other people like, you know, Lael Stone and Marion mm -hmm. Rose in my life, um, more recently, Carly Marie, and it, it's just completely um, transformed the practitioner I am today, I think. Yeah. That's pretty so, cool. Yeah. So social work is my background, but um, so after the birth of my second child, I um, felt this really strong calling to work with, with mothers, um, new mothers particularly in those early stages of motherhood. And I um, did some uh, training to become a postpartum doula. So um, that sort of all coincided with our year away. We, um, when my youngest was eight months and my eldest was just over two and a half, we took off for a year and um, packed up all our belongings and hit the road and just travelled um, wherever my partner was doing work at the time. And we had this year on the road, which, yeah, was the time that I discovered Nourishing the Mother podcast and sort of just, yeah, discovered this, other world out there really that um this world of conscious parenting um you know did your courses did loathing to loving had the realization that I didn't have to return to this career that I thought I was going to be in forever which was working in the hospital system um and yeah and that also what also happened that year was that my part during that year of us traveling we always thought we were going to go back to Melbourne um, you know, I had a very good job as a senior social worker in one of the biggest hospitals in Victoria and th thought that's just where I was going to go back to. But um, he actually got a job in uh, Gippsland in country, country Victoria. So we ended up moving there and that all was just a beautiful excuse for me to um, really follow my heart's calling, I suppose, and start up my own business um, in a place where I knew not one single person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but here I am now, 18 months, bit over 18 months down the track. And um, yeah, almost like just feel like I've just woken up one day with this really like thriving business with, um, you know, calling in the most beautiful clients and just have this really beautiful life. So yeah, that's who I am, where, I, where I am. Pretty amazing. Yeah. So what drew you to embark? How did you enter it? Thinking, oh. feeling, being, and then what did you realize coming out of it? Yeah, well, I mean, the thing that drew me to embark was you. I mean, <laughs> I, I just finished 12 months of sitting in the circle with you. Yeah. Pictures, but, you know, we, I'd done that was pretty profound, wasn't it? it was extremely profound. And that, that yeah. was the 
first year of my this year of moving to the country of starting my business like yeah because you would drive from country victoria to me and essentially metro victoria yeah just to be able to do that yeah like how is that for devotion and commitment yeah i was driving almost two hours each way um to come to circle each month and i remember there was one one month where my partner was overseas at a conference and i'm like I'm not missing circle. And so I organized like. <laughs> I remember. remember that? So was... profound. When there's a will, there's a way. It's I'm phenomenal. Like, I'm, not, I'm not making excuses to stay on my partner's away so I can't come. So I drove the kids in the car up to Melbourne and met up with a, a friend's daughter who had done some babysitting for us in the past when we were living in Mornington. And um, and yeah, she she took the kids for those couple of hours so that I could come to circle and took them on the train and took them to the park and took them to a cafe and I had a ball and I got to come to circles. So. I love that so much because that's such a self-honouring process though, isn't it? Is you went, no, this is important to me for me and I know it opens up my life in other ways. So how else can I resource myself rather than feeling like you're at the mercy to a set of circumstances? Yeah. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, and no, I'm pretty pretty good on the self-care yeah. <laughs> honoring of myself yeah well I'm that's what you teach in the world though isn't it well I do I do I, I I did let go of it a little bit this year I think just with the whole COVID thing and my, my business all of a sudden it expanded yeah yeah I was struggling to sort of keep up with how much it grew um so I did let that go for a bit but I I have I have just had taken a bit of pause you know taken a bit of a pause and have come calibrated mm. yeah back to yeah living living my life um which I feel fully in alignment mm. pretty amazing did you think um what did you enter embark with the knowing that you wanted to do or wanted to get out of it did you enter it with something and exit with something different yeah um well yeah I mean I I wasn't like to be perfectly honest I wasn't like totally clear what I was coming in for <laughs> I just knew that I wanted to be I mean I just whatever you put out as the you know on the sales page yeah. like that's what threw me in but also just wanting to continue working with you and wanting to stay in your energy and that you know obviously like deepen. find you very magnetic and wanting yeah just to deepen my own practice and obviously I already had my business at the time and just really wanted to yeah deepen the way I work with women um I, I mean, why I was that important to you why was deepening important to you um probably because of my own journey of personal growth and transformation mm. and I could see from working with women like you and, and others how um oh, just how transformative it can be to just go that bit deeper um mm. and that bit deeper than what perhaps I was already taking clients at the time um mm. I don't, I, I lacked, probably lacked the confidence um, mm. to, to go that bit deeper. Whereas... Certainly not the ability because you were a very grounded, embodied woman already. Yeah, I think it was probably like the confidence thing was probably the thing that was holding me back, um, which I think was one of the biggest things that, that you know, six, eight, nine months in Embark um, gave me. Like, I mean, you know, some pretty strong pep talks from you at times. <laughs> You know, um, <laughs> I'm not sure what that means. Strong pep talks. <laughs> no, no, I mean that in the most positive way. You know? Yeah, I know. <laughs> but um, yeah. Um, also, and also, I I had a deep longing to run women's circles. Um, you know, having having been a part of that for you know a couple of years, and particularly being part of your circles. Yeah. But also, yeah, I, I had some big work to do there. Um, you know, I, I very much, you know, because I'd been in Julie Tennant's circles, I, <laughs> again, it was another. Um, you know I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I've had lots of work to do, which you've helped facilitate through letting go of this, you know, this thing of where I was putting. Hierarchy. Up, yeah. You know, yeah. Pedestals and pits. Yeah. And um, and actually going, you know, I'm not going to run Julie Tennant circles. I'm going to run half the circles. And, um, and I, you know, you, I mean, you know, from the start of the year, I, I was running circles, but I wasn't calling them circles because I still lacked the confidence to call them circles. And I was calling them mother's gatherings and mother's groups and um, and that sort of thing. So it was only a couple of months ago that I actually ran what I called my first circle. And was it profoundly different? 
Um, in some ways it was because, well, for, well, for a start, it was it was my first in person because since I'd started this yeah. physical thing online. So in, in, in some ways it was different. I mean, probably not profoundly different, but there were differences. I mean, I probably brought more ritual to it and um, did some things um, that I, some practices that I hadn't done previously. So. Mm. How did the process of being an embark give you the confidence to really own that and therefore be able to sit in that? Um, part of it was probably just being surrounded by the type of women that you call into um, called into that space. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I think that was definitely part of it. The you know the cheerleading that goes on, the support was amazing. Um, and I loved, like, I love the fact that you um, switched from running this, the trainings from like, Facebook Live to the Zooms. Yeah. That was such a huge part of um, why I loved it so much. I think I was able to, you know, like, bring, you know, rather than trying to type in the comment, like, actually, you know, talk. Interact. Yeah. Interact and, you know, have other people jumping on and going, oh, yeah, you know, like, yeah. yeah. And it's been, like, it's definitely taken some deep work like self work <laughs> to get you know to get to that point um but yeah so there's there's been that it's the you know the community of women supporting me but also just um what you know the the support and reassurance that I've had from you as well that you know I'm on the right track and just um needing to really t- trust that I can do it mm. magic yeah Let me look at my questions because I could just listen to you instead. How do you feel when you're working with women? Oh, I love it. It lights me up. I just, and the more this, like the the further, let's say this year has gone on, the more like I'm just calling in the most incredible women um, to my work at the moment, which just like you can't see much, but I just, it just fills me with so much joy. Um, it's so it's so powerful. Um, Does it feel different being with women now post embark to what it was pre embark? Does that feel different in the space you're sitting in with them? Um, yeah, I think yeah. I suppose because I, I mean, going into embark probably I didn't even really <laughs> know what it was. <laughs> like yeah, I didn't even. I know. Like, <laughs> That's actually my problem. <laughs> Not yours, it's mine. <laughs> like when you say like in body leader, like I didn't even really exactly know yes. what Yes, this is fascinating. I find this fascinating. <laughs> I was talking to with Dash about this. She's like, I didn't really get what that meant because I just thought everybody was. He was like in this, you know, spiritual or women's work kind of around. And she's like, and then I did your work and I went, oh. I actually get in my body what that means mm. and now I see it very differently was it a similar experience for you yeah I think it was and also I, I feel I, I definitely bring a different energy now um, mm. and I've, I've, can, you, can you talk me through that a little bit because even I have trouble even articulating what it means to be embodied because I feel it in my body I have trouble putting words to it do you have words that you go I thought it was this and now I realise it's this. Do you have that? Oh, well, this is always my problem, as you know, my my issues with articulating things and putting language to things. I, I know, that's mine this, too. And I always find it hard to describe, but I think it's just this, um, I now, okay, well, one big thing is that I don't go into a situation thinking or, you know, or hearing a, a woman describe her situation I'm not like I think before I used to be very much in my brain and I was thinking how can I fix her you know that was my goal like, mm. oh, like I was very much trying to probably jump in and rescue her and fix the situations and I would you know I'd throw all these like solutions at her you know and I very masculine energy yeah mm. yeah whereas I probably approach things in a different way now where I'm not going in trying to fix anyone I'm going in to listen and to hear her story. And um, I think that, I mean, that probably, I mean, the way I was approaching things before probably does come from a, you know, a long career working in a hospital system where mm-hmm. when I was going in to see a patient with my notebook and pen, I was there with, with an agenda, you know, like I mm-hmm. needed to get that psychosocial assessment 
you know, completed to a point that I could then write it up in the notes. And I needed to have, you know, my intervention, I needed to have my action, I needed to have my plan, you know. Um, and so I'm going in there not fully listening, am I? Like I'm, I'm going in there thinking, what's my next question? What's my next question? How do I get that information that I need? The well, same for me as a naturopath, same thing, because we have the same prescriptive kind of formula that you have to work out in the end. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's yeah. fascinating, isn't it? It really is. Whereas now, you know, with, with the women I'm working with, I, I don't I don't have any agenda. You know, well, you know, I'm going in to hear her story, um, to hold space for her and, you know, to help guide or facilitate, you know, a process rather than be constantly trying to think, oh, what's the next question? What's the next question? You know, like that. And does that feel different in your body? So when you were like always going, right, I need to be on the lookout for the next question, the next thing that my action plan, does it feel different in your body now going, I'm here to be the catalyst or the gateway for her own transformations. I'm just here to be with her. Like, does that feel different? Yeah, it really does. So I will go in there. Well, one, I just feel this much greater sense of calm, calmness. Mm. You know, I agree. You know, I, I you know, I, I, I I'm so much better now at regulating my myself as I go into that situation as well. So, you know, which is medicine alone. Yeah, 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 definitely. So just those, yeah, just taking those deep breaths. Like that's, mm-hmm. I mean, that's just been the most one of the most. And I, I feel silly when I say try and say this to clients. And I'm like, oh, oh no, deep breathing is one of the most transformational things. <laughs> like, like now you that don't I, breathe enough. I yeah. know. Right. And I, oh, with my parenting, definitely as well, you know, like just, you know, that pause, taking a few deep breaths before responding um, in a situation that might be, you know, triggering for me for whatever reason with my, you know, with my kids, you know, I, I take that, those same skills into my work with women as well. So, um, yeah, definitely. And just grounding myself more and just relax, you know, just that, you know, relaxing of my shoulders and just mm. being more conscious of where I hold tension in my body. I don't know. I used to get really tense in my jaw and just really consciously relax all of those parts and just feel like my heart opening um, more as well. And I feel it from you too. Like I feel that when I sit on the screen with you as well. Like this is the thing with embodiment, isn't it, is that it transcends space and time. Mm, mm. And I really noticed that, I mean, through doing Embark, but also running my own, you know, I've done multiple spaces. online spaces during um, COVID and lots of different groups. And I think, yeah, as time went on, I just, yeah, like just became more and more evident to me how powerful um, work, you know, online work mm. can be. You don't have to be sitting in person with someone. Um, so. No, but it's about the energy you hold, though, isn't it? And therefore, the energy you transmit, which is literally the magnetic force. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. Do you have any other reflections you want to share about embark or things you went? I didn't know it was going to be this or anything else. Anything else? Um, or well, just a conversation. I'm happy out the way. Yeah, no, there's probably a couple of things. Like one, one of the earlier trainings you talked about, which. I think I was always like aware of it, probably I just became a lot more conscious of it um, after that was how much of our stories we bring to our work, like how much of our own stories we bring to our mm. work. Um, and I mean, I suppose this has been a journey that I've been on for, you know, for a couple of years now. So it's, it's, yeah, it's been a bit of an evolution, I suppose, for me, but that just really cemented for me the need to really work on my own, you know, work on healing my mm. own story so that I'm not bringing that to my work with clients. Mm. Um, that's been really that was a really powerful part of it because it's another type of relationship isn't it so that like it's fascinating yeah yeah and I just I mean I look back to my social work career um and I just think whoa like (laughs) how much of my own shit was I bringing to you know to to that work yeah without being aware of it um I just think like oh my gosh you know I just yeah just in terms of that it's fascinating yeah our yeah of people like social workers or you know whoever you know whatever yeah. Yeah. we've done this you know i did five years of university and i yeah any of it. no me neither mate so, <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. that was really um i think that was really really um powerful also um i mean one of my biggest things has been the the community like the community that you created that safety. I mean, I have shown up in some of those Zoom calls in so much vulnerability. Um, you know, you've seen 
all of me <laughs> in the same way you've probably you know seen that you know in circle mm -hmm. last year as well um the safety that you created for us all just to bring everything um thank yeah, you really amazing. Mm. thank you i really appreciate that because i genuinely like love that space i love I just love that. I love the women in it. I love the space. I love the capacity that we have to witness and self-transform in that process, you know? Yeah. Oh, me too. I'm just, I'm totally in love with it as well. And that group of women, I, I just. Oh, aren't they magic? I, I just love every one of them. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, <laughs> me too. <laughs> it's so good because it literally feels like a soul sisterhood, doesn't it? Like it's like this energetic resonance that's, a group of women who have this shared experience and outlook on life and there's something just incredible about that yeah yeah that was just and I think having it over the six months uh, you know that was really good because it's life yeah mm. I, I think probably the first three months not so much it was it was just journeying you know together over that time period by the end of it you know we're all like so close you know like no that's what Steph said too she was like oh my gosh they've become like my best friends yeah yeah it's magic yeah really 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 magic so thank you for, um, oh thank you uh, your energy is always happens. a delight okay, it happens isn't it like when you you know we're all drawn to you and so I suppose that's no surprise there's an equal resonance yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're all like same same but different you know yeah. Yeah. and I always think that's what it is it's always about removing the separation and coming into a space of non-duality isn't it where there is no hierarchy and everything's happening at once and everyone's a mirror and, yeah. and we're all on you know, we're all very much on different stages of our you know of our journey yeah. doing different things but just still like just yeah got so much out of just witnessing you know the other women going through what they were going through and yeah the mirrors and yeah it was really amazing it is magic before we wrap up and you share with us where we can find you and your beautiful work in the world is there anything that you would like to leave anyone with who is just going oh, I don't know maybe it's got to be a no-brainer right like <laughs> <laughs> I don't know I like you like anyone who is who's drawn to you and your work will get so much out of Embark like and and I probably haven't articulated fully how much I got out of it because sometimes it is just actually hard to put into words. But yeah, so that's much why I struggle. Yeah. So this is why I'm so grateful that that you beautiful women are here and just said yes to me because I'm like, oh God, I don't know how to say the thing that I know happens in my body and in my energy and I have trouble putting it in words. Yeah. Thing in your energy and you will get things out of it that you don't even like that you don't go into it thinking that you're gonna get out of it, you know? Um mm. that's it, you, you'll go through a, a process of deep self-transformation no matter what, I think, just. That's what my energy does. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And it's a blessing and a curse. <laughs> but I think you're probably quite the same. <laughs> Not ready to own that one yet. <laughs> Beautiful, Katie, can you please share with us where we can find you and your magnificent work in the world? Yeah, sure. So, um, well, geographically speaking, I, I live in Warragul, um, but I do serve I do serve uh, women in, in Melbourne, um, sort of up to an hour. I generally go roughly from, from my my home in Warragul. Um, so I, yeah, so I provide... For in-person support. In-person support, yeah. So I do one-on-one -on -one, um, in-home practical and emotional support so my, through my postpartum care packages um, for new mums um, and then I also run I, I do in-person counselling here in Warrigal at Warrigal mm -hmm. Wellness Centre um, and I also do online online counselling um, and mentoring and support um, so you, there's different packages I also have a, like a virtual doula package um, that people can sign up for which is like a six-week you know online support package um for new mums for postpartum yeah for new mums um and I also provide parenting support as well so I um have a beautiful yes. landscape of my parent mentor who I've found through um you and Bridget and I um yeah I'm on the pathway to becoming a aware parenting instructor so I yes provide um parenting support as well Amazing. So, 
The other thing I'm doing at the moment is a small group business mentoring program, um, so sort of with women's circle vibes to it. So I'm running with that at the moment and I'll, um, it's, yeah, it's delicious. I'm loving, loving running that. And um, I've had so much interest since just writing one post about it that I've decided to, that I'm going to run it again. <laughs> so that's energy. That's uh, energy. Yeah, that's, um, that's, yeah, that's been really amazing. So yeah, starting that up in January. So yeah, that's Where can my, we find you? That's my work in the world. Where you can find me is, so uh, on Facebook, I'm Katie Parker, um, dash pregnancy, postnatal and parenting support. And on Instagram, I'm, uh, my Instagram handle is Katie Parker postpartum. And my website is www.katieparker.com.au. Oh, beautiful, Katie. It's such a joy to sit with you. So thank you so much for coming here. Yeah, oh, thank you for having me and thank you for just creating the most magical, magical oh, space. Thank you. I mean, it just delights my heart that you're out there just doing magical, magical things with women in the world. Just saying, oh, if we were all mothered by a mother like you in our postpartum, I wonder how different this world would be. So I think it's a huge gift. Oh, thank you, Jules. Yep, I certainly love it. So <laughs> thank you so much. I will see you online. Okay, see you. See ya. Bye.